think there's only three types of realtors out there, basic types. What do you think? Ones that win and ones that lose. Which do you fall into? Let's talk. So my name's Kathy Burns and I've got Real Estate Riches right here. And this occurred to me the other day when I was looking on LinkedIn and this uh, Coldwell Banker agent was saying how excited she was to start at this new Coldwell Banker office because all the others were closing down, but she had this one to go to. I'm thinking to myself, what girl? Are you thinking about why did they close down? Are other real estate companies closing down around the country? Yes, a lot of them are franchises. The majority are franchises. Why? The cost, the cost to run these businesses. It's the same thing in a, in a sense that happened back in 2007 when so many brick and mortar failed because the costs were there. Take a look around, what's going on in the market? Is it doing well or is it struggling? It's struggling. So those three types of agents are really important and let's talk about them. So the first one, that's the part-time realtor. So they, they're just thinking, I think this looks like fun. I'll do this part-time. They don't have a whole lot of hustle, but they, they've got sales experience. They're thinking, I could do this. I could do this. I just had somebody reach out to me from my church yesterday, and uh, she's the minister's wife, and she said, hey, I've got a girl that's thinking about getting into real estate, and I thought maybe you could talk to her. I said, okay. I said, I will, but I said, I'm going to be very straight with her. So prepare her. <laughs> So when I'm straight, it's because I want to do it for their benefit. I said, if this girl doesn't have hustle, forget about it. If she's not willing to grow personally as well as in her business, forget about it. If she doesn't have some money to be secure, but at least the first six months, forget about it. Unless she's got hustle. If she's got hustle, whole different story. I, and I gave her some stats about how 80% of their realtors fail in the first two years. It's because they fall into these first two categories. They're not strong entrepreneurs because being a really good real estate agent, you're an entrepreneur. So let's get back to our Cobalt Banker agent. I'm thinking to myself, girl, you're not running this like a business. Now, maybe you've been doing it for years and you're saying, well, I'm going to stay with the same company I've been with because I love my broker and I, I love this company. But do they love you? I was with Cobalt Banker. That was my first company and I'm not knocking them. Um, I am saying it's not my choice because I don't want to be a part of a franchise anymore. I don't want to have to pay extra money to the franchiser. I don't want to be putting money in their pocket when I could be putting money in my pocket. Now, was it a stepping stone for me? Yes. Will it need to be a stepping stone for some people? Yes, but there's a strategy to stuff and I'm going to get onto that. So your part-time um, realtor, they, they really, they lack full commitment. They're struggling with consistency and scaling their business and they're really counting on referrals. They're not working their own sphere. They're really not doing themselves a favor. They're going to eventually quit or they're going to do it part-time or maybe they'll become an assistant to a realtor because they just can't cut it. That happens a lot. Here's the other one that does it, number two, who, who they've been in business probably a long time or even a short period of time. They're really loyal to their firm. I had one agent who was with Keller Williams. She goes, I bleed red. Her car was red. Everything was about it. And she was really, she was a salesperson for her company. I get it. I'm a salesperson for EXP. So you're gonna say, Kathy, that's the, like the hot cow and the kettle black. No, I get it. The difference is I analyze what this company is all about, comparing apples to apples, and it's night and day. If XP were to not have so many of the features that it has, I would absolutely be open to looking at something else. I don't want to be at this stage of the game. And that's another point in number two. They're content. They're they're fine with where everything's at. They don't want to sh um, rock the boat. And I get that too, as we age, but what's, your end game. If your end game is to just keep selling properties and you haven't done the things that you need to do to set up income streams for yourself, you can't quit. You're on that hamster wheel that just never stops. And now maybe you've got a spouse that can support you and that's great, but what if you're single like me and there is no spouse? You have to be on purpose of creating those income streams. Now, a lot of agents, I know one really successful one here, um, she was able to stop, I think in her early 50s, because she was very on purpose. She built her own business. She built her team within her business. She did commercial, she did residential. This woman was driven. That's number three, which we'll get to in a minute. But the difference between a two and a three is uh, the two um, doesn't really evaluate the strength, the financial strength of their company. Mike Dupree is a professor in Colorado, 
and he focuses on the real estate industry. I love this guy. First of all, he's got a lot of nice things to say about our company, but he's not prejudiced. That's what I love about him. He really dissects. If, if EXP is not performing, he says it. But I've rarely seen him say that, which I also love. But anyway, if he started to, and I started to see trends that weren't on target with where my future is, I would pay attention to this on steroids. And you can follow him on YouTube, you can follow him on LinkedIn, and I get his newsletter. I wanna see what he's saying, not only about my company, but about the other companies, because I wanna see who's in trouble and who's not. Now this Cole Banker office, I don't even know what state it was in. The fact that this agent was willing to say, I'm just gonna jump over there, tells me that she's not strong enough or from a business perspective. I'm not saying she's not strong, she can be very strong. But she's not strong in her business where she wants to really build it to where she's gonna know that her financial foundation is good. There's a big red flag in the financial foundation of Cola Banker in the town that she's in. And that is happening nationwide. Our market's weak, our brick and mortars are struggling because of expenses. So many agents are working from their homes. They don't need to work from a brick and mortar. Now some, and this is in the number two and number one category, they need to be around people. Why? Because they're not self-confident enough or done things enough to make themselves feel good about how they can go after their own business. So they're weaker players in the game. And you'll notice that of all the business that happens in an area, it's usually a top almost 3%, 3 to 5% of the agents that are doing the majority of the business. And they're kind of carrying those number one and number two agents through the deals because they're not strong. Now, could they be? Well, that's up to them. Um, number two would absolutely need to decide, you know, who takes priority. Is it my Vic, my firm, or is it me and my family? Me, it's always been me, 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 because, well, my family um, doesn't get much from me. Um, and I've been building through the years from scratch. I started with $600 to my name, knowing one person. It was non-negotiable for me to succeed. I didn't have the luxury of even thinking about being part-time. I didn't have the luxury of not building a business that was going to sustain me as I aged. Um, because I am aging. If you start at 55 in 2000 six added up i'm not a young chick anymore i need residual income i need flows and social security is not going to cut it so especially when you create a lifestyle which i have done in my real estate business so now let's talk about number three and number three that's me you treat it like a business have i always had the luxury of being able to treat it like the business that i wanted to no because i didn't have the money so i had to be a scrapper i had to figure things out i had to do things the hard way but I did them because I was committed to that end game. It wasn't about just now, survival. It was an end game. How was I gonna have an end game? Well, I've created that through multiple streams of income, a couple of which are with EXP, but also I do outgoing global referrals. I'm not gonna touch on that today so much because I've got that in other uh, YouTubes that are out there and worth watching because that is an income stream. Woo! Anyway, when I came to EXP, quite honestly, I was struggling in my business. I, I had a whirlwind going on in my personal life with my mother. I had also just struggling in business because my business partner and I had split up. All good. Switch companies. I was starting over. Um, I'd only been at Keller Williams a short time. And I went there only, and I'm not knocking Keller Williams, but I went there um, begrudgingly to a degree because I was going backwards of where I wanted to be in the way the business model was structured. But I was forced to go there actually fired from my previous firm because I called them on in their integrity and I'm not scared to tell you that either because I am a little mouthy as you can tell but um and I was one of their top listing agents but I was asked to leave and that's all okay you know what a lot of sucker punches are great gifts well it turned out to be one and I called my friends over at LePage Johnson who said uh, they were at uh, KW and they said well come on over here just sit by us well I did for about eight months and even KW offered me a coaching position but when I looked at it, I didn't like it. It was not state-of-the-art. The tools were not state-of-the-art at KW, and this was seven years ago. Uh, since then, they've done different programs, but from what I hear, they're not great either. And, and again, not knocking it, just different. So if you're with KW, this is not a slap in the face. This is a maybe wake-up call to check out what Mike Dupreet has to say about different companies. Check the foundation of the company that you're with. I will tell you, the one of my top group that I brought over to EXP was a Keller Williams broker owner. 
and she was very intimidating, strong personality. I love her to death and thank God we're friends. Um, but we weren't when I first approached her. And the only way I did approach her was we went to Pilates together. And as we were walking out one morning, she said, boy, I got to move up my whole office and we're moving it to this other location. I go, why? She goes, we got to shut it down. I go, why? She goes, because it's not profitable. I go, oh. And then I said, what's made you not look at EXP? I was great that particular day. And she said, we've looked at it. We sell too many homes. It, it doesn't make, the model doesn't make sense for us. And I, again, was bright. And I said, what if you misunderstood it? Would you be open to taking another look? Now, thank God she's a CPA in her back history. And so she said, yeah, because she wanted to crunch the numbers. What I found out later from her was that what she really wanted to do, and she had two partners. And so all three of them came to this meeting. And what she really, and they all wanted to know was, why are we losing agents at such a huge amount to EXP? What do they have that's enticing them? And really they were just looking for a counter sales tactic. And I appreciate that. That's doing business, right? So the reality was at the end of the meeting, they all looked at each other and said, we're going to EXP because it made sense. And that's what you need to do too. If, if you're a business builder, if, and if you haven't looked at EXP, you haven't actually crunched the numbers. Instead, you've listened to different brokers or you've been approached by excited EXP agents who are out there recruiting from pure excitement of what there is over here. Let that go. Just let it go. Be bigger than that. Be the business builder number three that I believe you are and if you will then we'll get you spreadsheets break it all down and you can decide maybe it won't be I'll bet it will be but maybe it won't be and you owe it to yourself to analyze your business as a business builder because if you want to get off that hamster wheel and really have an end game you better be analyzing everything that's out there you can you can do differences between LPT epic real do them all and I would encourage you if you're going to do that do it on a spreadsheet where you got it all line by line by line because apples and oranges don't add up make it all clear on a spreadsheet of exactly what it is and that's the difference between a business builder so here was a Keller Williams owner three of them who came over to EXP I think it was three years ago and they couldn't be happier because they're making so much more money over here they have multiple streams of income they have brought agents over themselves and they haven't gone crazy with that They've gone moderate with that. Their goal was to improve their business and they skyrocketed their business. Every one of them will tell you. As a matter of fact, one of the guys that they brought over, he had, he was a Keller Williams agent, newer agent, doing really, really well. He had on his Facebook profile, a circle around it, it said, Mr. Unrecruitable. <laughs> I loved his tenacity. He's a, a Marine, not a former Marine, because Marines just stay Marines, right? And he he's a very direct guy. I, I really like that about him. Sometimes he can feel like uh, he's really in your face, but that's the style of a Marine, right? What I loved about him was when he actually, somebody actually broke that shell. I think what happened was he got mad at KW one day. And so there was a crack. There was a crack where he was willing to listen. And that's what you need to be. Let the willingness to listen be an opportunity for you. You can still say no easily. No one's gonna beat your door down. Because the truth is, me, what I've learned in the seven years that I've been here, I begged so many people to come over because I knew it would be better for them. And many left. They left because it wasn't better for them. Because they needed that office. They're that one or two. They need the people. That's not a strong builder. This business works for one and twos if they'll work to, uh, to a degree. If they're on a team that provides them all the lead, leads, it will work for them, but a lot of them are just gonna coast. Maybe they've got a spouse and they'll still work. But the business builders belong here. This is it. And this, uh, there's a hashtag out where the pros go to grow. It's so true. I post things all the time from our press releases about teams that are coming over that had 400 agents or 500 agents. Why would they? One in Miami, was a flat fee based firm, private firm, not a franchise. And she had 500 agents and she came over. She was in Lisbon with me and I said, girl, I gotta hear your story. That was incredible. And she spoke in Lisbon and told us why 
she made the decision. She goes, once I crunched the numbers and I saw how many I was feeding because they were there because it was fee-based and they were struggling that I could give them more. I saw the ones that were fee-based that were paying too many fees could actually pay less and make more. Not only that, they all became stockholders. So if you're the business builder, which I hope you are because you might as well get out of the business if you're not, because this is a bumpy road right now we're in. And I encourage you to definitely reach out to me. If somebody's been talking to you about EXP and you haven't really sat down with them, then go meet with them. And if they're not strong enough to help you, ask them who they could connect you with that's stronger and still consider them as your sponsor. I had someone say to me, they scheduled a business strategy call with me. And she was a coach getting her license. Now coaches do really well over here because of their connections. And they know how to teach realtors how to do good in business. Well, anyway, I knew that she was probably just probing me to see why I liked it so much because obviously other EXP agents had talked to her and that's why she was getting her license. And I said, so have you already picked out your person that you're going to um, put your license under? And she said, I'm debating on one or two. She goes, I'm really picking the line that I wanna be in. And I thought about that. In the beginning, a lot of people felt the same way, that who your sponsor is is so critical. I, I don't think it's true. I, I, I really don't. I wasn't encouraging her to come to me because I got an incredible upline and support system for anybody that wants to come. But uh, there's a group within EXP called the Family Tree, which I love. And this is the philosophy by the founder, uh, Glenn Sanford. He believes we all level each other up. And when you talk to most EXP agents, that's what they do. So I, I have agents call me all the time. They're not in my organization, my personal organization that I get paid on. Hey, Kath, I need some help about this. Sure, I call somebody up. Hey, John, he's not in my organization. I need some help about this. Would you get on a call and talk to my gal? Sure, this is what happens over here. There's collaboration on steroids like you never saw before. So, do you like this kind of idea? Or you fall into one of these categories? Maybe it's a wake up call for you to see who you wanna be. Where's your future? What's your end game? I hope it is. I really hope it is. And if you're interested in the EXP and you like the kind of stuff that I talk about and you don't have somebody, call me. Schedule a business strategy call. Let's make some comments below. Let's have a conversation. Feel free to get them out there. Now, if you're a negative Nelly and all you wanna do is, is um, blow off steam, don't even bother on my page. I'm so not interested in that kind of mindset because you will fail at everything. I want winners with me. Are you the winner? Come on. All right, subscribe below. Let's talk later. I'll see you soon.